Hello everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life. This is Simran and this is my podcast Shelf Life. We talk about books, their philosophies, but most importantly, our personal relationship with a book. Today we have a very special guest with us. We have Divya Johari. And for her introduction, I wanted to do something very fancy, but honestly, it's in itself so interesting. Uh you have been a journalist, you are a blogger, you're also a poetess. and you continuously you know dabble in non fiction uh, writing as well you written for you know personal finances blogs you've written uh, things to do with film and astronomy and so many things and i am honestly so boggled but um, you know i didn't want to ask you something really cliche about you know how do you manage and all that but seriously like how do you manage all of these things as well as your instagram presence just tell us <laughs> thank you so much for the warm welcome that you've given me and you know it's uh, like i told you earlier also it's happening for the first time that i am on the other side of the you know camera so yeah, yeah i mean it's, it's not i would not say it's not challenging but honestly if you pursue several passions in your life and you really want to give them a platform you would any how you would take out time or manage something or the other and you will definitely give it a go so i just feel it's it's in built you know and i have seen my mom doing this i have seen uh, my family members doing it and you know my friends doing it so i just feel that probably we are even lucky you know because we are getting those kind of resources That's that true. we can actually get to do all these things and seeing my daughter i actually get motivated all the time yeah because you know you it just happens it just happens yeah. without uh, any particular intent yeah. i would just say you know pursuing your passion and something what you like to do converting that into uh, you know something in uh, probably a perspective of a job or anything right like, like they say if you're working and that work is your passion there's nothing more than that yeah it just happens with time absolutely i i totally agree i mean when you have several passions and you can sort of uh you know dabble in all of them and still manage to keep all of them afloat and keep yourself afloat it's such an interesting thing to do and i i love everything that you said um and you know i i wanted to ask you like has it always been that way i mean even growing up did you always have a lot of things that you wanted to do at once or is that something that just happened recently maybe so i used to dance a lot uh, while i was growing up i was an avid uh, bharatnatyam learner and i learned bharatnatyam for almost 8 years yeah. thanks to my school uh, so i used to study in rajmata krishna kumari girls public school which is now being ranked almost uh, among top 10 mm. for girls lovely plus they have you know it, it's a day boarding school so they have made it to top 10 list and uh, it's the best school in rajasthan apparently so we had those kind of resources i really thank my parents you know to actually make that decision Yeah. because uh, i really really revolted against it uh, at that particular point of time yeah i kind of look back and i it just feels so overwhelming that we were given so many opportunities i was always into dancing i was into poetry i was into writing a lot and i always had that soft corner for literature for uh, poetry then i also used to play basketball so there wow. were a lot of things that <laughs> that we kept on doing and you know we had that particular aspect wherein after 2 pm post our lunch uh, we were we actually had this kind of activity slot every day right so we had that one one and a half hours of activity slot when we actually learned to make uh, soft toys one one day we had home science kind of thing Hmm. so there were so many things that we wanted to up for so you just know that you want to pursue everything simultaneously and you don't <laughs> want to choose 
so it's it's just that you know in between when i was in college uh, so that is when i wanted to uh, kind of explore the opportunities i got there i started writing for newspapers and websites uh, my first stint with the journalism happened in 2012 yeah so that is when i joined in uh, i joined delhi times as a, as an intern reporter but i did so many events and i attended so many events seriously yeah it just got through and you know you will not believe people i interviewed back then in 2012 they still remember me wow that is so cool <laughs> so i just think you know uh, pursuing several things has got me to where i am today definitely yeah and for sure it it just happened and you know we were never denied anything obviously uh, so we always knew what limited set of resources we had but we wanted to make the most of it mm, yeah so i think that made most sense and you know that is what i want uh, for my daughter as well that you know whatever kind of resources we have today in hand i would say people are complaining about corona and they are doing a lot of things but the time i am getting with my daughter honestly i am not complaining uh, about the fact that i have got work from home hmm. yeah a lot of things that way they lead to you know i i am pretty sure you must have had the similar experiences yeah i i agree i mean i i am that kind of person as well i love pursuing like a lot of things at once and i i can't like i can never do just one thing it has to be something or the other so it's it's either, either it's poetry or it's like taking up a sign language class or just just learning anything and everything i love that i totally relate to everything you said it's all about resources and how do you access them and how do you keep yourself right. on that path um and you know one of the things that you said that really struck me and i instantly feel like um when people have this uh you know desire to pursue a lot of things and they have this inclination to learn and do all of these things there's also the sense of self doubt that comes in where no. they almost feel like you know they they hold themselves back because they say that you know maybe i'm just not good at it or maybe i won't be too good at it i won't win or i won't achieve so they hold themselves back do you feel like that's something that happened in your journey as well it did i was uh, you know i was quite i was a very quiet child when i in my early teens probably because of you know the fact that i changed uh, school back then hmm. i had a set of friends that i had left behind so that kind of happened but you know uh, i've always had so much of encouragement uh, from my parents or from the people who are associated with me in any form be it my friends be it my teachers be it my family be it anybody even uh, today you know just because we are just talking right now i interviewed the uh, an actor called ojas ravel yeah hmm. he's a gujarati actor he's also into several things so i could actually relate to him because you know we have had that phases we obviously self uh, self doubt is something that you will always have but you should know how to over- overcome it so i actually overcome my self doubt when uh, this was like back in uh, probably in 1998 if i'm not yeah. wrong and i had attempted writing poetry for the first time i used to write poetry but they were more of like four five liners yeah uh, this time i actually wrote uh, a poem which was probably 16 lines wow <laughs> i won the national award uh, for uh, from scholastic for that particular mm. poem in my you know in my age group wow yeah so that was that did boost my confidence of course and then mm. you know you keep on participating in so many activities when people actually choose you mm. you understand yeah. that there is something in you that you can actually enhance mm. yeah plus uh, now that we are talking about it i also draw and paint and so yes you do of course you do 
<laughs> no, it it wasn't anything, of course. But I just uh, when you actually spoke, uh, you know, about the fact that you also paint and you also mm-hmm. draw, so it just struck me that I used to do it, and <laughs> now too I do it a little less, of course. But that uh, arts is something that you know uh, I really love to imbibe uh, my vibes or my uh, passion towards it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be it any form. So those kind of things, I think I also got a, a merit certificate from Gablin uh, for uh, wow. <laughs> for my paintings and all, you know, back then. But yeah. eventually, hota hai that you know you end up pursuing certain things to another level. Certain yeah. things you have to leave behind. Probably, mm-hmm. I would know a lot of things at this point. Yeah, self doubt hoga. But you know, you just know it that you're doing it for yourself. You're not mm-hmm. doing it for somebody else. Definitely, yeah. That's that the key point. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's that like when you thing, know, you when know, you know that, that, yeah, when you know that you are the reason you're doing something. Like it's not external. It's not because you want to impress someone or you want right. to gain someone's approval. You're doing it for yourself, and that's True. the best part. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, you know that. Sort of also brings us to books, right? You said that you love yeah. poetry, obviously, but it's also art in all forms. You you draw, you paint, mm-hmm. you do so much uh, with just you know the art field. So how did you get to books? Like, how was that journey like? And did someone you know again did someone inspire you or give you that little bit of confidence to just you know pick up a book and start reading? How did that happen? So I still remember when um, you know this is back when I was in um, this is back to the time when I was in nursery probably my preschool years. Yeah. So whenever you know we were awarded the with the you know the best child award or something like that you yeah. you always get those annual day awards. Yeah. When you top your class or you score uh, good marks or there are some comp- uh, competitions that happen. So we used to get books. As uh, those presents, oh. we never got trophies. Oh wow! <laughs> wow, what so a great school! Exactly. <laughs> so you know, uh, if I don't know if you know about uh, Jodhpur in Rajasthan, but if you ever come down there, you would really explore this particular thing. There are two or three schools there that they uh, they actually give books as presents. You wow. know to. Uh, you get a certificate, of course. You uh, also get now they get trophies hmm. along with the certificates and books. But that point of time, if you come first, we used to get seven books. Oh if you come God. second, you get five books. So those kind wow, of things. Wow, that sounds so cool! I would love to be a part of that school. <laughs> <laughs> and you know eventually it so happened uh, that this particular habit got into me it it was more like that this habit was me instead of me imbibing that habit mm. it actually uh, you know became kind of an integral part so i used to be if, if at all my parents are sleeping or something like that so they would always find me under the table i would be reading <laughs> I would be reading, sitting under the table where there's no noise, nothing. I used to zone myself out and read. Yeah, uh, I relate to that. Uh, you know, <laughs> that is how things happen. Hmm. So that's so those cool. are my early memories. Um, that is how I started doing. And Phil, Jesse, you know, you know, I've been writing poetry since a very long time. So I used to read a lot. I did my graduation in literature. I did my masters in media management, also. But we again had some parts of literature. You know, you how yeah. books have evolved or how media has evolved. You do read books for that. Yeah, you have to refer. Sure. Kitna bhi online kar lo, but you'll always go back to books. Yeah, that's true. Plus, my dad is a lawyer. My mom is a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you wow. know my yeah. parents and my extended family now uh, now my uh, you know my in-laws they are also they have several degrees they used to uh, teach and they also used to read a lot hmm. you'll find books everywhere hmm. so it's it's basically uh, my dad has a library of around 
2500 plus books oh my goodness wow <laughs> and those books are like separate so wow. everybody from my family had a different genre who really i used to love john grissom <laughs> the books by him uh, i can also you know uh, testament was there uh, then mm. there was this uh, book the bleachers the lawyer and uh, there were so many books of, you know i read yeah. the entire series actually Wow. Then I also grew up reading uh, Enid Blyton. Yeah, of course. I mean, I love. Yeah. Those <laughs> I mean, the you have to. Yeah. Seriously, you can't ignore the Secret yeah. Seven, the Famous Five. You just love those kind essential. of books. Yeah. yeah, it's just essential to growing up. You can't it's miss that true. out on that. I agree. I don't um, agree. True. Emma. Emma book was uh, mm. the book. Uh, Emma, Emma, Pride yeah. and Prejudice, uh, Man- uh, Manson Park, Mason Park was there, if I'm not wrong. So there are a lot of books that you read while growing up. When you grow up, you read uh, kind of, you know, different genres. Yeah. But I latest being the class by Eric Siegel. If you, okay. if you ever lay hands on that particular book, you will be just... you know astonished how fictionally a person can go into details like the minutest wow. details yeah so I, i think i'll find that out enjoy. yeah i haven't like i haven't read it yet but i'm definitely going to pick up i love the way you're describing it for sure <laughs> the first time readers should actually start with ruskin bond yes Malibu i i agree Dales, yeah ruskin bond those kind of books and you know you should notice that you'll be able to relate more rather than yeah. you know just having that literary background exactly indian writers true. indian true. world yeah you can definitely fit in more in that world for sure i agree it, it's, so it's i think it's really if cool. somebody from india is doing that then i would yeah. say you should always start with malgudi days it is yeah. one book Mm, I love and, that. And uh, Ruskin Bond is of course and he's yeah. an amazing author and you cannot ignore that fact. For sure. I mean it, it's so funny because you I like I've been talking to so many people who read books and everything and they usually have the same you know they have these same books that they list out as you know Enid Blyton and it's Emma and Pride and Prejudice and all of that and that's great but none of them really look at Indian literature as well. They don't look at Ruskin Bond and they don't look at Margaret Days and all of these great books that we have so definitely like a lot of first time readers should think about picking these book up too and i i love everything that you've said so far about you Thank know you. uh just sitting under a table and reading and hiding <laughs> and reading i used to do that myself and then wow. i would get scolded on by my mother who would be like you know you have to read with lights on you can't do that that's not you know you're going to strain out your eyes and everything so <laughs> i have had that experience myself and um, i i i love that you know reading has been such a huge part of your whole life almost right with your parents so, and now uh, you discovered books on your own as well and now you've met your in-laws who also read so it, it's really been with you your whole life and uh, but but that is again that's literature but how did you find poetry on your own like is that a genre that you came to totally on your own without like um, your parents influence or someone else's influence how did you meet poetry so i it just happened when uh, you know when you were pretty young they never start with novels uh, straight away right they start with short stories they start with short poems hmm. I used to love poems that rhymed. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know that kind of uh, it's a different sensation altogether for me. I mean, it's 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 completely different. Yeah. So I could never rhyme my poems initially. Hmm. It was always a, a different thing for me. I mean, I I came onto rhyming words pretty much later, probably in standard fourth when I started writing in standard second or first. i used to write those kind of uh, experiences right till date i do write about experiences only but the whole fact was that my brother i still remember he broke his tooth hmm. so it was shaking earlier so 
uh, I actually wrote a poem about that. Oh wow! <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and you know the the attributes. Uh, it was basically the poem used to start with shaky, shaky tooth, milky, milky tooth. This was the first line. <laughs> <laughs> and we still laugh about it till day but you know it just started off with that that was my first poem ever i still have those poems somewhere but uh, you know those first set of poems actually show me how far i have come now yeah but those were the early ones it just happened on its own honestly uh, there was no influence in that yeah uh, eventually when we started studying poetry and literature uh, we came across kamla das who was wow. actually known as kamla suraya hmm. i love love her poem Same. of uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> my yeah. mother at 66 uh, then there was this uh, malabar afternoon karke ek thi Hmm. so i think those kind of poems really enticed me and uh, yeah. there was billims words word the hmm. serenity uh, the serenity that you actually get from those kind of you know poems yeah and you have robert frost with the the road robert not taken yeah definitely there were other poems also then we we actually jumped on to shakespeare in uh, sonnet oh wow so there was this sonnet 14 there was sonnet yeah. 16 <laughs> was actually uh, i was expecting in 2016 when i actually got a lot of time to uh, focus on my poetry you know right. back again yeah so otherwise so when you're working and then you don't get so much time but mm-hmm. uh, that was one uh, difficult year i would say but uh, i had really got that kind of time so i started mm-hmm. writing again daily you know when yeah. you are expecting you actually undergo a lot of emotions yeah of course and a lot of different experiences so i just thought of penning it down and keeping it with me because i wanted my journey to be you know penned down and i wanted that with me mm-hmm. yeah. it just so happened my you know my family uh, i mean one of my family members my grandmom she bumped across uh, she bumped into that she just came across that particular notebook and she gave it to mom so my <laughs> mom actually so <laughs> that i had written everything and you know when i shared that with my friends and everybody was like that you should actually take out your book why aren't you doing that i mean you have been writing since such a long time yeah so why not just you know get it out in the form of a book hmm. honestly i just wanted to publish my book and keep it with me i never wanted to launch it commercially i mean you know, yeah yeah <laughs> as a poet you become very vulnerable uh, because you have yes. so many yes. emotions penned down yeah and so many things and you know i have poems where i'm actually talking to my child inside me and mm. i have penned that down as well so you'll probably obviously once my book releases you'll actually come across that as of well of course yeah so you know those kind of things they intrigue me experiences emotions you will always find one sort of emotion in my poem every time i write you will of course so yeah. that is how, that is how things happen that's you know everything you said was spot on like all of these writers that you mentioned they all have their unique voices like kamla das has a very very strong bold brutal unique voice william wordsworth on the other hand more naturistic more nature more, yeah Sorry. it's more okay. subtle it's more pleasant and all of them they have their own unique voices and uh, i'm sure you do as well and you know i think i i probably read it somewhere that a poet you know the way that they express their emotions in a poem uh it's always poems are always short and usually they are and they're short lived and they're very fu- you know just full of color and they have a lot that they're trying to express and uh, whereas on the other hand if you take a novelist or if you take a novel um it's more elaborate there's a lot of space to kind of hide between the lines you don't have to be as vulnerable um you know you can make your cat characters very vulnerable but maybe not you yourself 
and yeah. a poet doesn't have that luxury i believe oh, and obviously um, yeah you you're right. just all over there you know you're everything that you feel is on a paper and someone will probably judge it the way that they want to so how do you really like how do you negotiate that with just how vulnerable that medium of art is you know and and why do you still find yourself you know gravitating towards that genre particularly see uh, usually what happens is that we fail to recognize emotions okay i have really observed it yeah. so even if somebody is writing a novel i would uh, really start with a novel right now because since you mentioned it so if someone is actually writing a novel you will find that one of those fictional characters would be that would be the author yeah you would you would obviously not know that since uh, he or she has named that person differently yeah plus you can play around with a the character there yeah. so that becomes uh, but somewhere the root and the essence would be same Yeah. you know of your personality so kind of if i come out with a book a novel mm. and if you know me very well then you would also know the fact that okay a particular character or a particular instance in that particular novel uh, relates to my life or belongs yeah. to me yeah definitely so when you are writing mm. when you are actually writing uh, for uh, you know i just talk about myself i would not uh, prefer to talk about other poets here simply because you know everybody has a different perspective yeah. yeah so when i write um usually what happens is i write my experiences mm. i do not want to uh, fail on recognizing emotions that i feel yeah so it is uh, it started off as a way of you know writing experiences but eventually it became at times it becomes very easy for you to express on paper than in conversations yeah so i used to do that in between that was a particular phase in my life that you know when i used to stay on my own in mumbai yeah for my college my job and you know my post grad and everything so that is when i used to feel kind of thing up हर वक्त अपने फ्रेंड्स के साथ नहीं हो सकते राइट सो यू हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ अ टाइम वेयर यू फील दैट यू आर ओके यू आर सराउंडेड बाय फोर वॉल्स यू कैन नॉट बी ऑन द फोन ऑल द टाइम बट एट द सेम टाइम यू नीड टू गेट थिंग्स आउट या सो आइदर यू आइदर पीपल स्विच टू राइटिंग डायरीज और दे राइट पोएम्स आई चूज पोएम्स ओवर डाइरी आई loved rhyming my words i mm. used to actually look for words that could rhyme with my thoughts <laughs> yeah <laughs> that kind of rhythm uh, actually took me to writing the poems of my book as well mm. so ye cheez hoti hai you are vulnerable only because of the fact that they are straight from the heart you are not yeah. writing fictional things yeah even if you are writing fiction you are observing it somewhere because a mm. poetry is always a first hand experience definitely you cannot Im- imagine things while mm. writing poems yeah even yeah. if you do but the essence the root will be the same. the same yeah you know it will always be the same so yeah. i think that is why people say that you know in a novel you can play around with a lot of things but yeah. when you are a poet you can <laughs> yeah i agree and it does definitely take a certain amount of guts to be able to be that vulnerable also i think you know definitely i don't think everybody yeah. is totally comfortable with like just getting it all out on a piece of paper and oh, potentially presenting really it i don't yeah if people won't be because uh, you know when i started off even i wasn't yeah but then i actually figured that when i'm sharing my experiences on social media when i'm sharing my experiences uh, with people first hand experiences then why can't i share uh, a po- my poetry with people yeah i i agree so that is how little do we know <laughs> happened yeah. and uh, you know it just took me 2 years to actually uh, to rather it took me uh, okay she's to Uh, 2018 born right so mm-hmm. 2017 i was uh, you know expecting 
and uh, by 2018 when i delivered it actually took me two years to decide whether i want to showcase my vulnerability or no wow. two years yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and obviously i added on more poems yeah but uh, you know it just so happened that you know you always have that self doubt not uh, not about the fact that you know uh, you are doubting yourself here but yeah. that doubt how people are going to you know exploit that vulnerability yeah. or they will like it or they won't like it yeah. you have 10 things in mind definitely i love that you brought the self doubt angle back you know it fits in perfectly <laughs> like you you never really uh, let go of that self doubt i think it's always there and maybe it can do you some good as well right maybe it can motivate you to write more or write you know better who knows maybe it just works for some people as well so yeah that does quite that's quite perfect and one of the other questions that i wanted to ask you is that like a lot of people have been saying it for a while but usually now it's kind of getting that voice is getting louder which is that poetry might probably be kind of losing their audience right now like with people you know moving on to web series or just other mediums you know you can watch so many movies now and do all of those things a lot of people might be moving away from poetry and poetry. you know right. hindi poetry and urdu poetry and so many other forms of poetry that we have today so do you feel like that is a thing do you feel like people are also losing steam and how does that affect you as a writer that writes poetry so i think uh, with time things evolve you do not lose out on a particular thing per se yeah. but things will evolve with time for instance like we were talking about uh, you know a time where uh, kamla das and william wordsworth and robert frost they ruled a particular genre yeah you know different genres but people actually studied them yeah and they still do yeah so somewhere anywhere in uh, any part of the world you will always have those kind of people mm. it's how you reach out to them what i felt is uh, you know in my poetry you will actually see that my poetry is pretty relatable it's only your everyday experiences right and the words i try to use simple words mm. so that people just don't uh, see it as a poem per se but they actually see it as an experience mm. wow. so those kind of things is something that uh, keeps your audience glued so yeah i understand the fact that you know lesser number of people are reading poems now or uh, you know something like that but poetry is again you have 16 liners you have 11 liners you also have eight liners yeah you also have haikus so mm. probably poetry has just evolved from lengthy stanzas to 16 liners to 11 liners to eight liners And yeah. now they've come back on four liners and three liners. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So poetry yeah. is still there, but it has just evolved. And you have people who read the uh, haikus a lot. Yeah, definitely. In fact, the younger generation probably is more yeah. inclined to haikus. Yeah. So yeah. poetry is not going anywhere. Uh, it will has uh, it will have a new set of audience. It mm-hmm. will uh, in itself, you know, quite. Uh, be being quite new itself because you will always see a new form uh, coming along as and when time evolves yeah definitely because if you see if you now see even a lot of people propose each other with poems yeah <laughs> but ha huh, yeah they do wow. I mean, it's it's more of like romanticism through poetry बट इट्स प्रोबेबली अगर आप दो लाइन की शायरी भी बोलोगे शायरी इज ऑल्सो पोएम मतलब इट्स पोएट्री सो आई थिंक एवोल्यूशन सब चीजों में होता है आई मीन आज मेरे थॉट्स में भी इवॉल्व यू नो आई इवॉल्ड आई कम अलॉन्ग वे एंड यू ऑल्सो मस्ट हैव कम अलॉन्ग वे सिमिलरली यू हैव इवॉल्व विद टाइम राइट वेन यू ग्रो अपी गेट एक्सप goes to different things so our interests uh, vary some things we carry forward with us some things we leave behind so things evolve with time so i'm yeah. i'm pretty sure 
ऑडियंस चेंज हो जाएगी आई वुड नॉट थिंक कि ट्रेडिशनल पोइट्री हर जगह होगी बट आई थिंक वी आर स्टिल गोइंग टू स्टडी लिटरेचर यू नो द रिचनेस इंडियन लिटरेचर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी दैट एवरीवेयर वन ऑफ द यू नो फाइनल थॉट्स दैट आई वांटेड टू टॉक यू अबाउट जस्ट टेल अस अ लिटिल बिट मोर अबाउट योर बुक एंड व्हेन इट्स गोना कम आउट एंड the name and everything like let's tell, tell us more i am very intrigued <laughs> so i i'm thank you so much for this question but i'm i'm pretty uh, kind of surprised myself that i'm launching a book <laughs> yeah, i am <laughs> congratulations so, you know, thank you uh, so little do we know uh, it's basically on the fact i actually chose the name or i rather came up with the name solely because we guys as people as uh, as humans yeah. we really do not want to identify emotions yeah. what we are feeling we really are uh, you know kind of i i don't know how it works with everybody but for me if i'm feeling sad i want to feel sad i don't want to uh, just fake a smile i cannot fake things Wow. so it is <laughs> it is something like that but how people have been doing so far you know if i am kind of uh, so if i love uh, you as a person i would want to be vocal about it yeah. right i would do things uh, that you would like yeah. correct but if i have a doubt that you know you are into somebody else or i am into you that doubt is something that i would want to hide and not express hmm. that is exactly where we go wrong we complicate hmm. things yeah. we complicate our emotions and that self doubt or that doubt leads to another emotion that hmm. another emotion yeah. probably would lead to something else and we would really not know what is happening with ourselves yeah with us so yeah. that is exactly why you know uh, you start falling apart as a person why mm-hmm. people lose out on their peace because mm-hmm. there are simple things in life that we just complicate yeah so my poems and my poetry is exactly about um, those kind of feelings that in daily lives even though we are feeling but we want to hide those emotions Right. we don't want to recognize or we would just you know kind of say yaar chhodo yaar hum ye kyu feel kar rahe hain matlab ye to yeah. feel karna matlab hi nahi hai hmm. kyu nahi hai yeah why not this is how love little to happen yeah i i love that you know this is the foundation of that book like this is that emotion from which the book has uh, you know yeah. been birth and i love that i think so many people would appreciate that you are saying all of these things and you believe all of these things as well um and it's you know it's a part of like it's a part of therapy you know the the fact that you sure. should be able to name your emotions and, and just express it in any way possible you know so yeah i think poetry can be therapeutic in that way also um sure. and i love that i am very very excited uh, about this book and I, i'm definitely going to be reading so it and I'm, i know that our listeners would be very thrilled as well um so you know just before you go right. i think just a couple of recommendations that you would give to a newcomer someone who's just discovering poetry quick books that you could recommend or something that you want to tell them just anything say i would uh, i would not say that you would read poetry and get influenced Hmm. i will r- never ever suggest that although i am i am an avid reader i really really love reading books but i still uh, say that poetry is all about originality hmm. yeah. please please don't choose plagiarism at all <laughs> that's a given yeah please don't <laughs> please don't plagiarize for sure <laughs> that's Seriously. a pain <laughs> yeah um, but it is yeah otherwise just this is lovely advice i'm hoping that whoever is listening they're just taking notes with all of this cuz really this is just gold uh thank you so much thank for sharing you. all of it and thank you for you know being here with us and talking about your book talking about your journey i feel like i kind of 
also know a bit about your life now because of everything you've shared and that's quite lovely mm. um Thank I, you so I, yeah i i wish you all the best i hope that the book does wonders which i'm sure it will thank you and thank you so uh, yeah i thank you so much for being here and thank you for talking to our viewers and listeners we had a really good and time thank you thank you uh, so much simran for actually hosting me and taking out the time among you know such uh, difficulties yeah. that we all are going through mm. yeah but you know i loved having this conversation and i'm really glad that uh, you know we actually had this conversation me too yeah and it was really nice meeting you virtually same same here it was so cool and all and... the best for your podcast <laughs> yeah Please all the best for your book to enlighten us thank yeah. you so much <laughs> i'll be you know i'll be putting in all the links to the books that you've mentioned and even to uh, your instagram handle and anything else that you might want to link so whoever is watching Uh, make sure to check the description that's where i'll be you know putting all the links uh that's about it thank you all so right. much for joining us <laughs> thank you take care now i'm 